This video is part two of the uh, classes in Swift. Uh, I'm not going to do any more than this and the last video, even there is a lot more to do in classes because this is just to cover the basics now. Right, let's get into it. So, let's say you make a class, right? Just any class, doesn't matter. We'll call it a class, right? And you want it to have certain properties. You want it to have a variable a, which is equal to an integer, or a variable b, which is equal to a string, an empty string, right? Maybe you'll write a function in there, maybe you won't, okay? Well, that's all well and good, but the only problem is here, when you go to make an object of that class, so let's say variable acl1, as in a class 1, and we just say that it's a class initialized. Let's print out some of those values. We'll print acl1.a and we'll print out acl acl1.b. Right. We'll print both of its attributes out. Okay. And you can see that there's zero and actually this is just blank a blank string underneath it, or it should be. Not sure why it isn't. Well, it's a blank string, so it won't print anything out, I guess. Uh, let's just do that. Let's just print print ACL1. Die again. Right, you'll see it. There you are, blank string. Nothing in there. Okay. Now, that's cool and all, but you've still got a value, even though, you know, the value is zero and the value this is, you know, a blank string. You still have a value, right? And maybe you don't want uh, the class to start with a value because maybe you want a different value or you maybe just want it to be blank so you can change it to something else, right? Well, there's a way of doing that. We can make class a class, oops, not one class, a class two, okay? And we're going to say that variable a, we're not going to say it's equal to zero. We're just going to put a colon. And we want this to be an integer. So we put the word int with a question mark and we say that variable b is now a string with a question mark, right? And when we actually make a, a an object of this class, it'll actually initialize, as in it will have initial values uh, that are equal to nil. Okay, so we'll say a variable classy <laughs> we'll say that it's equal to a class 2 right and we'll print classy dot a and now we'll print classy dot b first and then we'll print classy dot a right let's see what happens here we've got two nil values which is cool i suppose you know now we don't have a predetermined value we've just got nil cool so we'll say that we want uh classy dot a is equal to 99 classy dot b is equal to hello there simple simple let's print those out so we'll print classy dot a and then we'll print Classy dot B. Okay. So you see that that's worked. We've got our 99 and we've got our hello there as our values. So what's happened here is we've made a class and instead of having, you know, a value, a predetermined value when we initialize, i.e., make an object of the class, we've actually allowed us to have basically nil values. And we can add the values in ourselves, right? That's kind of cool. And all we've got to do is we've got to use a colon. We've got to use the data type after the colon and a question mark after the variable declaration. Okay. And that will say that we want a nil value and we want this variable to be of this type. When you assign a real value that isn't a nil value to it, that's what we want it to be, right? Simple enough. Okay. You might be thinking, well, Maybe I don't want a nil value. Maybe I want a specific value. 
Why do I have to have a nil value when I make something? That's not what I want. <sighs> okay, okay, fine. You don't want a nil value? That's fine. We'll make something that isn't of nil value. Okay, we'll say variable. We'll do exactly the same as we did up there. We'll say variable A is an int. And we'll say that variable B is a string. Now, remember how we made functions in, uh, you know, other videos? Well, we can actually make a very special type of function called an initializer, which actually starts with a keyword in it. Okay. Now, inside of these brackets here, uh, these parentheses here, should I say, we want to add arguments uh, that will influence the variables. Okay. Just bear with me. I'll show you what I mean. So, the first value you want is number because that's an that's that's the integer. And we want that to be an int. By the way, when you're making functions or initializers, you actually only need the signal, you don't need the parameter, but maybe that's not neither here nor there. And then we're going to put uh, str, which we short for string. And we want it to be of type string, right? So those are the arguments that we'll accept, okay? And we're going to say that a is equal to num. Okay, and that B is equal to string, uh, equal to str. What if we decided that instead we wanted these to both be A and we wanted that to be B there? What, what do you think would happen? Okay, let's run it. Let's find out. We get an error. We get an error. Um, and the reason we get an error isn't anything to do with that well it's sort of is to do with that constants but what we're saying is we're saying that this value in this value is equal to this value we're saying that the value of the argument we put in is equal to itself okay fine but we're not changing the value of the object you know we're not changing that we're not changing for example object dot a or object dot b we're just turning the value into itself, which doesn't really make any sense. So that's meant to be B there. Oops. Making a lot of mistakes today, aren't I? That was meant to be B there. So what we have to do is we have to use a keyword called self. And we use a dot notation. Okay. Now what self is, is look, we're going to initialize a, a class, an object, should I say, right? And when we use the initialization argument, i.e. this with arguments in it, self actually refers to the variable, the object uh, that we're trying to initialize. So we're saying for this object, we want its a value to be equal to the a variable. Okay. For this object that we're trying to initialize, we want the b value, the b attribute, should I say, to be equal to this b variable in the initialization argument. So self is just a way for an object to refer to itself. Okay, and that's what this object will do in its initializer. Let's try and run that. Now, now you see there's no argument, now you see there's no problem. And here we can say that variable CLS we'll call it instead of classy or whatever. And we'll make a class free. And we'll use a. We'll say that a is equal to 99. We'll use b. We'll say b is equal to governor, right? Does it run? No problems, so I assume it does. When we print cls dot a and we print cls dot b, we should get governor a ninety nine here, or ninety nine a governor should I say? And there we go. So here, instead of having to, you know, get null values and change those null values, what we're actually uh, going to get is we're going to get the values that we decide. And we don't have to, you know, make two declarations like this where we change the actual uh, attribute specifically. We set the attribute as we want it when we initially create our object that we've put into this variable here. Okay. Now, let's compare it to another sort of uh, 
call variable CLS2, say A class 3. What do you think is going to happen when we construct this and run this? Do you think I'll get an error or not? I got an error. Why did I get an error? The reason I got an error is simply because the initializer here, there is no like empty initializer. The only initializer we have is this one, right? Now you can actually have several initializers inside of a class. I could put an empty one, but normally when we use an empty initializer, it works. But this object will now own this class when it creates objects can only use this initializer. So once you declare an initializer, that's all that the object can use unless you declare another. So you can, you can declare several initializers, uh, but if you, you know, if you don't, you'll only be able to use the one that's declared or the default one, which would make, you know, the two, uh, sorry, just coming out of these out. The default one would actually make these two values nil if we didn't have this initializer, right? Just as it has here, the other one, right? So yeah, basically you need multiple initializers. I'll show you what I mean by that. So make class a class three or four even. How imaginative I am. Variable A again. Oh bloody hell, I'm quite imaginative, man, aren't I? Yep, we'll say variable B here. There'll be a string. Gosh, aren't I? Aren't I just breaking my imagination here? Now we're gonna make an empty initializer. And all it does is it says that a or self dot a is equal to nil self dot b is equal to nil all right that's what the empty initializer does then we'll have an init we'll just call it a is equal to int it's going to be a exact replica of the last one and b is a string and we'll just put our squigglies there and we'll say that self a is equal to a self dot b is equal to b and hey presto let's just hope i don't get any errors there haven't you know i have clicked the run button click it a few times there and it has worked so let's see what happens here so we'll say variable clss for class equals a class for the most imaginative name in the world and i'll print the two variables so we'll say uh, CLSS a and print CLSS dot B and then we'll make another variable we'll call it CLSS2 we'll say that it's equal to a class 4 but this time we're actually going to use the argument right we're going to say 322 that's one of the arguments and for b we're going to use a string that says pokemon okay just because i used to like it when i was younger i don't care now i'm an adult now so i don't really care about games and things like pokemon so much oops i need to be cls2.a so we're going to print both of those and uh, we'll print cls2.b all right let's see what happens now we get two nil values because the empty initializer, we've made an empty initializer this time, and it sets it all to nil. And we've also made our initializer here that will set these to um, non nil values, i.e., 322 and Pokemon the string. Okay? So you can see that as, if we declare multiple initializers, we can use them. Quite simple, quite simple stuff. Okay? Now then. Let's go over everything. So, just space that out a little bit. Here's a class, any class. And as you can see, we've had to put, you know, an actual value here. This is a sort, it's not a nil value, but it's just a, an empty string uh, for the values of the attributes, the variables, right? Printed that out, and you can see if you go up that you've got zero, you know, a non value string, and zero again. Here in a class two, you can actually see that we've got an integer and a string. And when we make a new class, you'll actually get nil values. 
However, if you try to assign values to um, these nil variables, you'll be able to assign them as long as they're an int or a string. If I were to use for a, you know, a string, when this is of type integer, I'd just get an error, which you'd find out if you did that on your own. And then when I print, you know, the new updated versions for that, instead of getting nil values, I get 99, 99. Now here in the next one, I've decided to make an initializer. And an initializer is basically what, what, what you run in order to build an object. Most initial, initializer is uh, empty and will just set the default values that you put here uh, unless you specify them not to. In this case, our initializer will allow us to set the integer value variable A and the string value variable B by passing them as arguments inside of its initializer there when we initialize an object of this class. So here you can see we chose 99 and governor. We print that out, you can see we haven't had to do any further uh, alteration uh, to the object. It's just become that by the initializer. This, however, didn't work when we try and use an empty initializer. And that's because once you've declared an initializer, if that's the only initializer, it would be the only one that would work. You can only use one initializer if you only have one initializer. And if you don't create one, it'll be an empty initializer. If you do create one, it'll be whatever initializer you create. Okay, here I've basically uh, set out an empty initializer, an initializer where you've got arguments in it. And if you look at this, you can see that if I use the empty initializer and print it out, I get two new values because I've said that that's what will happen when you use an empty initializer. And that when you put the arguments in with a non-empty initializer, that you'll get values as you'd expect. That's uh, pretty much everything. There is a lot more to classes, but as this is a basics video, that's all I'll cover. I, I cover, sorry. I would recommend that you try and make your own classes and make your own code. Always remember to run it. Even if you think it's not going to run, even if you think you'll get errors, just run it. The worst that can happen is you'll get an error. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.